Good day, the 12s. My name is Karen Mazzocchere and this is my bus. I'm going to take you on a ride around the city and we're going to discuss some economic concepts. So I'm on my way coming to you to pick you up, then I can teach while we drive. So this is you waiting for me. That's me there coming to pick you up. So I want you to get on the bus. Let me just show you how the bus looks on the inside just for you to get familiar with it so i want you to sit on that seat right there at the back where people will walk in and so i'm going to teach while we we drive okay it's a rainy day go and take a seat and then we can get started so as we drive around today we're going to cover markets but which topic in particular we're going to first look at the classification of markets. Like for us to say this market structure is perfectly competitive. This one is a monopoly. This one is an oligopoly and this one is monopolistic. How do we know? Okay, it turns out we have 12 criteria according to our syllabus and we're going to look at these 12 things. So these 12 are how we classify our markets. For us to know that the market structure that is being explained uh, in this particular scenario is perfect. How do we know it's perfect? If it's monopoly, how do we know? Okay, so the first thing is number of firms. Now with number of firms, uh, it's either firms, it's either there's only one firm, there are a few firms, or there's uh, a lot, that is many. Okay, so some market structures have many buyers and sellers, some market structures have only a few, and then there is a market structure with one. Okay, so we're going to look at which is which. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the nature of product. Now, product, products vary. Uh, you'll find out that there is a market structure where products are homogeneous, there is a market structure where products are heterogeneous. There is a market structure where products are unique. And then there is a special market structure which has either homogeneous or heterogeneous. Like uh, you will see this market structure as we go on. Okay. Now, uh, the next thing we look at uh, is the, the control over price. Like um, how do we like who as a business in this market structure do you have any control over the market price okay so you will see that it's either a firm has no control or a firm uh, has is is a price maker in that case we call them a price maker the one that has no control we call them a price taker the next thing we look at is uh entry or barriers to entry now with entry uh, it's either it's free for other firms to enter this market structure or it's difficult for other firms to enter this market structure. Okay, now um, what it means is uh, you will find out that there is a market structure where if, if you want to participate in that market structure, it's going to be very easy for you to enter into this market structure or and, and another market structure you'll see that entry is kind of difficult and then another market structure you find out that entry is completely blocked so we're going to find out for now we don't uh we we, we are not yet covering uh you know what which market structure is which you will find out as we move on okay so that was entry the next one is information now you're going to find out that information is either complete or incomplete so these are the only two options okay um, it's either information is complete or incomplete okay the next one is demand curve now you will see that the demand curve uh, for for these market structures are not the same uh, there is a market structure with a horizontal demand curve uh, we also call it perfectly elastic okay perfectly elastic so it's horizontal just for interest sake there is a demand curve another extreme which is perfectly inelastic that one will be 
vertical but it doesn't ap uh, apply to what we are covering today so the only thing i've said that was just you know an addition the only thing i'm saying here is um there is a horizontal demand curve which is perfectly elastic if the market structure if the demand curve is not perfectly elastic you'll find out that it might be uh what's the word it might be kinked so with with a kink demand curve it's kind of unique it's different from the rest in the sense that it has two demand curves that <laughs> collide where we say that's where it kinks uh, which happens to be the best price you'll see as we move on and uh, then the last two they are almost similar but the difference is how elastic these demand curves are so you'll find out that these two they are both downward sloping but one of them is uh, more elastic than the other so we're going to discuss that the next thing we look at is the type of profit that is made uh, in this market structure so you'll find out that um, other market structures can make economic profit in the long run other market structures cannot make economic profit in the long run so they can only make normal profit in the long run you'll find out which is which the next thing we look at is decision making so here we look does decision making by firms in this industry affect other firms in the industry you will find out that decision making in certain market structures uh, affects others in that particular industry you'll find out that decision making in other market structures does not affect others and then you'll find out that there is a market structure where decision making is just independent the next thing we look at is collusion now collusion is firms coming together and discussing ways in which they can minimize competition amongst themselves. So with this one, you'll find out that um, uh, uh, they, there is a market structure. There's only one, one market structure where collusion is possible. And in this market structure, what makes it possible is the fact that there are only a few firms in this particular market structure. However, collusion is illegal in South Africa. So firms should not collude. If they are found wanting, they will be in deep trouble. Okay. Now, the next thing is productive efficiency. Now, can firms produce efficiently? Now, you'll find out that with this one, it's either yes or no. But to some degree, there is uh, some, a market structure which is somewhere in between. Then after this one, we look at allocative efficiency, which is more or less the same. Oh, but productive efficiency has to do with, um, you know, firms uh, producing at the lowest possible cost and allocative efficiency is more of uh, uh, an, an, an optimum mix of resources. Then the last one, which when I'm now going to discuss each of these market structures, I normally would make this one what can I say? The, the first thing I talk about, which is examples. Okay, so you should be able to talk about examples and that's it. Okay, so now I'm waiting for you to get off the bus because I think I'm almost there where I want you to drop off. Okay, so I want you to get off the bus. We'll talk in the next video. Thank you. God bless. Thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Carden. See you tomorrow.